In lesson 15, we're going to start to look at uh, lines, splines, and shapes. So we're going to look at how we can draw more interesting shapes, things that we might want to turn into 3D objects later. Uh, it's very useful if you want to draw around something, or you have maybe like a cut border, or something that has a, has a more complicated shape. You want to start to get involved in organic shapes that you can, you can mould in 3D. We're also going to look at how we can measure things, so we can just double check what uh, the position of everything is on our stage. So we're now into chapter 15. We're looking at splines, shapes, and measuring. We can start with measuring. Um, we've got a measurement tool here, linear dimension. Click and hold. Wherever you see a little arrow like this, it will give you new options for measuring. So you've got a protractor tool for doing dimensions, uh, linear scale, um, uh, continuous dimension, but linear dimension's absolutely fine for what we're doing at the moment. When you try to, when you click on it, it will try to create for you a new layer called dimensions. You can choose a layer that you've already got. We haven't built any layers yet, so let's just let it make the layer dimensions. That's quite useful for us. We can select it later. So we're going to click OK. It just creates a layer for us automatically. If I jump over here to my layer menu, there it is. It's made it an orange color. We can change it later if we want. So all you do is, if you've got your snap tool on, just like earlier, we click on one corner, click on the other corner, and it just drags across a measurement tool. And now we can see the width of the stage, so that's quite handy. Um, if you wanted to use the angle tool, again it goes into the layer dimensions. Uh, line select, so we're going to select two lines. Now this is where it's interesting that if you have two separate lines built rather than one continuous one. Uh, you could do this freehand as well, but we're going to go with line select. Click OK, we're going to select, oh, let's turn off the grid snap. And let's turn on the midpoint snap to make sure it selects the right lines. Click on that line, we're going to click on this line, and there we go, it's created a nice degree angle for us. That could be quite useful if you're trying to show uh, maybe a boom arm or something that's coming off at a different angle that you, you know, isn't quite normal. You might have like a 70 degree uh, tilt on a, on, a, on a boom arm, so that's why it's quite useful to annotate these sort of notes. And all of these icons up here that have arrows on them, if you click and hold on any of them, it'll bring up new options. So this is where we can find things like dotted lines. Uh, click and hold, we can create a dotted line there. Right click, finish line. Um, and you see we've got a dotted line. But equally, this line I created earlier, if we use this as an example, I can right click on this, go to properties. So common tool, use that quite a lot, right click and properties. Up here, we can change this line pattern to dashed as well. And we can turn off double line if we wanted to. And there we've got a dotted line there as well. Different type of dotted line. So we can get rid of that because there's loads of different ways of doing it. If we hold down left click and we can go down to this one here, spline. This is slightly different from a line. Uh, it's a line that has multiple points and it will create a curve between those points. So whereas this first line we drew here going around the outside, it was a continuous line but it has a straight edge. All the corners go perpendicular to the, um, to the line. You see what happens when we draw this one. I'm going to turn off all of my snaps to make it easier. I'm going to draw a nice curved edge around the outside of this stage. So I'm going to start here. Oh, let's turn my snap back on. This is where it's useful to double click down here. Turn that off and turn off my ortho mode. So I'm going to click around. And you see, as I drag that around now, it's creating this weird shape. So the further away I pull it, the longer the incident of the curve and the closer it is, the shorter it is. So I mean, really, you just have to do a trial and error. There is a, there is a lot of maths involved in the uh, the calculation of making this work, but um, you really can't apply logic to it. You just have to keep clicking until you get what you want. And as you can see, then you start to... If I want to go round that corner there, I end up moving this line at the same time, in which case you might need to have a second point and then go around. That's when you start creating lots of points. So it really depends what you're trying to create. If you keep it dead straight, you'll get a straight line. Very little curve there. Uh, but now that's such a long line, I can't quite get that curve to go around. So, so I'm just messing around here. You can see it takes a lot of trial and error. Uh, once you get to this point, I want to connect up to that end there. This is where the close line is quite useful. Right click, ah, finish spline. Ah, didn't do it. That wasn't what I was expecting. It's meant to join up at the end. But never mind. We can, uh, we can come to that later. What we can do now is we can drag these points around. We click this. We can now move these around later so we can just try and tidy up the, the curve. Now a more advanced 3D modeling program, when you click on one of these, you get the anchors that control the incidents going in and out of the points there. So that's quite useful because you can see here, this is, this is a really interesting one. You've got a very short 
anchor either side of the uh, of the point there. So it's very difficult to get a nice gentle curve. Whereas one that's got a much longer incident going into it, you see we're moving the whole shape there. So you really just got to play around with this to get it right. Um, there is an art to it when you when you get the hang of it, but it always takes me two or three attempts to get it right. Um, if I right click on this now, I'm hoping this is going to work after I've been let down by my uh, closing pop, closing my line option. When we right click go to properties, there should be an option to close my line. I can't see it. it should be there. That is closed. It's greyed out. Interesting. If I unclick spline, then I can close it. Let me see, show you what happens. I click apply, and it's taken away all those curved edges, and then it lets you close it. And it's going to join that line together there. It's not exactly what I wanted, but still, it's interesting to look at. You can see how that works. So we'll come back to that later. When we come to 3D modeling, I want to show you how you can draw a complicated spline like this and then turn that into a 3D object. So we'll come back to that. But you can see here how you can control the spline. So we're also going to look at shapes. Um, we've got some 2D shapes. We've got rectangles that create hexagons. Uh, we've got circles. We can also create arcs. The arc tool is really useful. Um, I'm going to spend a little moment on it because it is good to know, but it's actually really, really hard to get the shape that you really want <laughs> with this. Uh, I always have to draw it in another program and import it because it's just, for me, impossible. Um, I tend to use this mostly for balcony rails. I have a model of a balcony rail and I want to draw in the exact incidence of the, the curve of that, that balcony rail. It never quite works. So you can either type in the radius of the arc and the arc start and end angle. That doesn't make a lot of sense uh, unless you've used it a few times. So I always go to interactive. And what you do is you have to click and place the starting point of the arc, which will be this side of the theatre. The, uh, oh, there you go. And now we place the end point of the arc, which is going to be over this end of the theatre. And then we place the middle of the arc, which creates the curve. So it's going to be out there. But then it does something really odd. I click OK there. I now can't move it around. So I can't easily change that shape. So if I wanted to make it more of a I want it to come out a bit like this and then in and around. You can't do that because it's a normal arc. If you want to do that, you have to click on this one, which is an elliptical arc. And this one gets even more complicated because you've got two layers of interaction. So I'm going to click Interactive 1 and create the same thing. Oh, no, I have this one slightly different. Position the center of the arc. And then you drag out a circle. Now that circle is not going to be a circle when it's finished. It's going to create an arc. But you have to place it first. So we're looking at this edge, I'm trying to show you, show you about pointing, the bottom edge of this circle is what's going to become the arc later. So you can see we can create something really rounded or we can create something with a really uh, sharp angle of incidence. So I'm going to click once and now I have to select my start and finish point of this arc. Now you can see I can only go one way round, I can't do the bottom edge, which is what I really wanted. Um, and that's all to do with which way round you draw the, the circle. So I'm going to set my start point over here. And I'm going to set my endpoint over here. So I could try going that way, but it won't let me. It has to be on that edge. Not to worry, I'll show you how to fix that. So I'm going to click there, and that's now created my arc. It just gives me some details. That's effectively what I'd have created if I typed the dimensions in manually. I click OK. So there you go, I've got my arc, but it's the wrong way around. Um, no worry, if we go to Edit and Mirror, it will let us mirror that, uh, that arc the other way around. So what you want to do is click on our Snap Tool. We can snap from that edge to this edge. Oh, turn it back on again. Sometimes it turns itself off. And we're going to mirror that arc to the other side. So we actually get that circle that we saw the first time around. But it's made up of two separate objects. So we can delete the first one just by selecting it by left click, hitting delete on the keyboard. Or we can right click and go delete if, uh, if you have it selected there. And then we've got a different type of arc, which is actually more balcony shapes. So tend to find, I tend to find that when I'm making balcony uh, you know, rails and, and pipes, I use this tool, even though it's really fiddly. So that's enough of um, of lines and, and shapes. I'm going to come on to 3D shapes later on, if you're interested in that, wondering why we haven't covered it yet. Uh, but next we're going to go on to the Tools menu and Edit but uh, buttons, and we're going to start to import our 2D plan from CAD as well. So I'm just going to talk you through that briefly.